Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. And right off the bat, I want to apologize for all the audio hiccups. I'm trying to do the best that I can. Part of me wonders if I should go back to the webcam and maybe I'll do a test to see how the webcam audio sounds, but it's not going to be pristine. This at least is a little bit crisper, but the, I mean, I, yeah, I apologize for that. And this is the best what I can do for now. But uh, the request for today uh, Jose Ballard wanted me to do a commentary on the 2007 film Ghost Rider. Now, if anyone wants to request any type of reviews of movies or something else, uh, topics, reactions, re reviews, pretty much any type of video, you can send it either directly to my PayPal or join me on my Patreon. Uh, both things are down below in the info box. I have it paused at the beginning here. And I'll we'll watch it on my TV. So, I I'm not sure this might be the extended cut, but uh, I'll find out because I haven't watched the extended cut much. The last time I saw this, I don't remember which version it was honestly. But uh, three, two, one, pressing play. And turn it down a little bit. So here we got the Columbia Lady logo. What's under the dress? What's under the toga? Toga, toga, toga. If you're wondering why I'm looking over here, I'm looking at the TV. And Ghost Rider Crystal Sky. So it's used to make crystal meth. But And you got the Marvel logo. I see you got some comic book panels from Ghost Rider himself. This is directed by Mark Steven Johnson, who had done Daredevil. And I like Daredevil. I like the theatrical cut. I think the already director's cut is even better. And, I mean, you start with Sam Elliott. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Sam Elliott, great actor. Really enjoy Sam Elliott. And the Big Lebowski, and even uh, Shakedown with Peter Weller, Fatal Beauty with Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, he played, he was in another comic book film, Hulk, from 2003. And more Steven Johnson, for me, like I said, I like Daredevil. I like this movie. I believe I saw this in the theater. Now, does this film have flaws? Yes. Like, I'll defend Daredevil. Despite the bad CGI, especially the R-rated director's cut, I'll defend Daredevil. This, there's not much of a defense, but I can enjoy it as a easy going time waster. I like some of the production values, some of the casting choices, like Peter Fonda as pretty much the devil, Sam Elliott I mentioned. Like I said, this came around 2007. I believe I saw it in the theater. And I remember having a good time in the theater. I think it was around... Was it Valentine's Day? I, I can't remember the exact date. For some reason, I keep thinking it's February that it came out. Because that's when Daredevil came out around February. And the film did well at the box office, but a lot of people did not like it. And to this day, it's considered one of the worst. And... One of the worst, I'll take this over Captain Marvel, I'll take this over Batman v Superman, I'll take this over Man of Steel, I'm sorry, uh, I'll take this over Elektra, I'll take this over Catwoman, I mean, like even this opening credits I think is fun, showcasing the, the, the hellscape. Which, in a way, Nicholas Cage would uh, deal with that in Drive Angry many years later. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if some people think Drive Angry was the more successful Ghost Rider film. But... It's weird how people... Comp I mean... Do I understand some of the complaints? Absolutely. But when people talk about the humor, what about the humor in the Marvel films? I mean, those get way, way, way out of line with humor. The last Avengers film had the Hulk giving people tacos. This is like a serious, <coughs> serious story about 
we gotta rescue a billion billions of people who were disintegrated. So let's have the Hulk giving fucking tacos and Ant Man and all this other stuff having uh, comedic relief. I just don't understand that. Like people are okay with that humor, but oh my god, Nick Cage is eating jelly beans. Yes, yeah, it's, it's weird and quirky. <clears throat> but I mean, you can't say one and ignore the other. And this one is <laughs> to me it goes about at a faster pace in Avengers Endgame. I'm sorry, that's my personal feeling. Grant is like an hour shorter. No, that would piss people off. Now, I have never read a Ghost Rider comic book. So, what the actual comic book is like, what the actual stories are like, I could not tell you. If you're a big fan of the comic book and this went against the grain too much, I can understand that mentality because that's some of my complaints of whenever the do the Ninja Turtles nowadays or Spider-Man and so I, I can feel you on that <coughs> of course the dad is coughing he's got cancer and then the kid is going to take away the cigarettes Which will lead to making the deal. So at least, again, based on the comic book, but at least it gives a bit of what's the word I'm looking for? A more a, you feel sorry for the character because of you know, he tried to do the right thing. He tried to he made a deal for the right choices. And by the way, the sequel. Which fucking sucks in my opinion. When I first saw Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt because I really liked this movie. You know, I still liked I don't love this movie, but I liked it. I went, oh, the guys who did Crank and Crank 2. I love those films. And Nick Cage is coming back. And okay, there were rumors that it was going to be R rated. That didn't happen. <laughs> but, you know, the and when it came out, I'm like, yeah. People forget, sometimes I do want to light stuff, but it's like, eh, I can't, no, fuck it. Because, okay, I was saying, in the sequel, the whole deal is very different. The whole deal, I mean, I, they could not get Peter Fonda, so they another actor, but like, I mean, it's a different location, and throwing, he's throwing blood on the contract, like, like he's purposely making the deal. I'm like, wait a minute, this is not what happened. So it's like the sequel almost wants to say this film doesn't exist. Even at the end of the film, he's like, I'm going to use my power for good. And at the beginning of the second film, it's him. I don't want to help people. I want to be, I'm like, what the fuck? You're like, this is not consistent. And I'm wearing shorts, I know. This is just this consistent with the fucking ending of this one. So I, I don't understand. I guess they thought, well, we don't like the first one, but we want Nick Cage. But whatever. I'm sorry, I put this above the, the second one. Father and son set to blaze. His name, Johnny Blaze. Which now, I mean, if that wasn't based on the comic book, people would groan at that name. Oh, Ghost Rider. Yeah, he's fine. And his name is Johnny Blaze. People would roll their eyes. Obviously, you can't because that's what it was in the comic book. But I'm just saying, if you made an original film and it was this story and you called your main character Blaze, people would fuck you be like, what the fuck? Really? Yeah, really on the nose. But I like the name. Cancer has spread. And Mark Steven Johnson, he didn't do a lot of films after this. He did a film with Robert De Niro and John Travolta. I forget what the name of the movie was. 
he did. I'm not sure he did much after that because these films were so much hated. And I'm like, I don't think they're that bad. I don't think they're that awful. Do I think there's issues with this? Yes, the villains are not that good. Uh, they get taken out too easily. And part of me wonders if, if someone out there who's a big, big fan of Ghost Rider, please answer me this. When Ghost Rider has these fights, do they always end so quickly? Like, it seems like in these movies, he's almost overpowered to the point that there's really not much of a struggle unless he does something incredibly fucking stupid, like in the sequel, jumping on a guy who has a fucking bazooka in his face and not doing anything else. I'm gonna jump on you. Go ahead, hit me. So, I, I didn't. Is that something that just the movies don't get right? Or is is that a issue with the comic books? I did. Please let me know in the comments. Um, if you can. I mean, Peter Fonda, granted his performance is not supremely energetic, but... I liked him more than the guy they got in the sequel. I'm sorry. Like this, I mean, it's Peter Fonda. He just brings a little bit more class to it than, again, the guy in the second film didn't do much for me. It has this, like, crystal, what is that, one of the crystal skulls from Indiana Jones on his team? And this, it's like he doesn't really make the deal. It's more as if almost by accident. But it's more of that trickery with uh, Peter Fonda's character. But yeah, 2007, I mean, that was the, the same time where you had stuff like Spider-Man 3, which was fucking awful. Like, I'll take this over Spider-Man 3. Interesting, the, the silhouette we just saw with uh, a creature form. Little details like that are nice. But, like, I mean, I'll take this over Spider-Man. I mean, I'm sorry, there's a people like Spider-Man 3 tier strong. To me, that movie's a piece of fucking junk. It's trash, it's overstuffed. Uh, to be or not to be Maguire, just crying all the fucking time. All the marketing makes it seem like it's going to be a serious dramatic movie, but then when you watch the movie, there's a goddamn emo dance sequence. Because when I think of the splat suit and Venom, I think of emo dancing. Might as well be putting on the Ritz with the f young Frankenstein. It might as well be. Anyway, I know people would be pissed at that, but uh, to each their own, I don't like Spider Man 3. I think he fucking sucks. And I would probably say it's the worst Spider Man film. Now, I know Nicolas Cage, he's a big fan of comic books. I mean, there was, of course, him going to be Superman in the Tim Burton film. Which, uh, and I, it would have been cool to see how that turned out. Now, maybe it would have sucked. More than likely, it could have sucked. But the the death, the, the Superman documentary about the, the making of that film, or the, I should say, the pre-production of that film was it the, the death and return or the death and rebirth of Superman lives one of the best documentaries in my opinion one of the best documentaries insanely fascinating uh, and it would have been cool if someone did like an animated movie and did they cage the voice it With, with the animation, you can do that. In fact, now that movies are stuck and they can't be made and the only ones that can be made is at home, you know, animation is a way to do it because people can animate, send it here, send it there, touch on this. Do these, do direct video animated films based on scripts that were never made. So, uh, the alien alternate scripts, the Superman Lives, Stuff of that nature would have been cool. Would be cool. 
But, I mean, Robocop versus Terminator. You want to do fucking Terminator, which they want to do a sequel? No, just do an anime film, Robocop versus Terminator. Peter Weller, I mean, if you pay him enough, he'll do it. He did the fucking voice of Robocop in the Mortal Kombat game and Kentucky Fried Chicken commercials. So if you pay him enough, I'm sure he'll do it. The voice, because he doesn't have to be in the suit. Drama. Sort of the frustration and drama before the shit hits the fan. Pretty much, he wants to go with his girlfriend, and the dad's like giving him sort of a olive branch. So at least it's like one little sweet moment before everything goes haywire. And yeah, you just say this film, like a lot of others follow a certain formula. But, you know, it's a formula that does work. Sometimes, yeah, it, d it does get old hat, I could be honest with it. And of course, he fucks over the deal. He did cure him, but then the next day just kills him off. Because the devil's a dick. Big surprise. Like, he didn't even go through the hoop. He didn't even trip and fall. It literally just went like this. <laughs> I said, what the fuck happened? I just fell down. Now I'm dead. Do -do 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 -do. Ba -da -da -do -do. I know that laugh. It ain't Jabba the Hutt. It disappeared in the air. He disappeared like a fart in the wind. See, at least this film in a cinematography looks like it's got a bit of a budget. At least based on the cinematography alone. The sequel, Nelvedin and Taylor tried to do the same look as a Crank film. It works for Crank and Crank 2. I love those two films. It doesn't work for a Ghost Rider movie. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. It just comes off as cheap, mundane, and underwhelming. Or the camera man is drunk. Fucking the camera doing like this all the fucking time. That's another one he wanted me to do, but it's a review. Okay. Gonna fucking pale light. I don't understand this this rise of the finger. It just comes off as silly. And granted, Nick Cage does that and Ghost Rider. I don't know if it, this guy was mimicking what Nick Cage did. So it's like, okay, you gotta do this. Maybe that's the case. But that's sort of... No one points like this. They just go... Or... Or... Not... No one does that. Except if you fucking Baylor Gozi Dracula. So I... Yeah, that, that, that does come off as silly. I and mean, then you know, Nick Cage, I, I have to believe it's something Nick Cage did. So then like the effects guys had to match it when Ghost Rider did it. And then maybe they shot this afterward. I don't know when they shot this. So maybe, maybe it was reversed. Maybe the kid did it. And then Nick Cage, if that's the case, Nick Cage just said, no, that that's stupid. Why? I just want to know why that came about. Was this kid, was this guy doing that for some fucking reason? And if that's the case, why didn't the director go, why, why are you doing that? Why, why are you pointing this way? I mean, it just come off as silly. 
But he's gonna leave his loved one because he's cursed. You just still stay, you know. I mean, yeah, you're cursed, but the devil doesn't want anything to, to do with you, so for now, so just stay with her. Now we got Nicolas Cage with Ozzy Osbourne music. A crazy train. I like Ozzy Osbourne music. And showcasing just how many fucking. The whole idea is that the devil wants him for something in the future, so it seems like no matter what he does, he won't die. Of course, my question is, well, how do you know he just won't cripple you? You won't be dead, but you could be paralyzed. <laughs> and you don't know what he wants from you. Maybe he's like, oh, you know what? I'll cripple your ass. You'll be in the hospital, but you're still alive. And with my, I mean, he's a fucking demon, devil, whatever. He could just like, oh, your legs don't work? Oh, tough. You don't stand up, you don't walk. But anyway. I mean, that's not a bad shot. And that overhead shot. Contract. Good job with the stop, man. Like, ooh, like, I, like, how do they do that? Like, when it goes forward, the helmet hits the wheel and just explodes. Nice use of slow mo. Like, that's well directed. I'm sorry, that that bit is well directed. The use of slow mo. What the stunt man did. Um, him sliding back, hitting his back on the wall. Yeah. Is the bike okay? Is the bike okay? Yeah. Yeah. I forget this guy's name. Is a is a Donald Logue or I can't remember his name exactly. Who plays his buddy? But. Nicholas Cage's performance I could deal with in this. It's still got that quirky Nick Cage. But the sequel, it was just, I hated his performance in the sequel. It was just too over the top and I did not care for it. Knocking at the door. He's knocking at the door. Fucking hell. Like, they needed the tone. People like, no, I have Cage over the top. That's a... That's a tight rope that you have to walk carefully because when you fall off it, it just comes off as maybe you didn't join in a bad way like Wicker Man or, but it just, or it could be just annoying to me, irritating and annoying. And to be honest, my favorite Dick, Dick Cage films are ones like Con Air, The Rock, maybe National Treasure films. Bringing Out the Dead, I think is a good one. But again, the, the Nick Cage character, he does have a bit of quirkiness to him. He's eating jelly beans from a cup. I think Nick Cage, he has like a tattoo of Superman logo or or did he just or did his name is Son kal -El? I can't remember the, the exact details of that, but like I said, he's a big comic book fan and uh, I'm sure people have asked him about Superman Liz, but I guess he's one of those like he doesn't want to talk about it. Well, she just makes sense because this guy seemed really gun ho to do it. And then last man gets taken away from you. And then all those months and months of people saying, that's fucking, this go fucking suck. Nick Cage, let's go bullshit. Now, great, I would not pit Nick Cage as Superman, but after seeing fucking Henry Cavill, I'll be to see what Nick Cage Superman would be. And that's not a bad moment where the lightning flashes. You see a little bit of the skull. But 
So now you get the. This is the villains. Uh, yeah, this shit sucks. <laughs> They look goofy, like the bid mob, they try and do like 30 days a night or something. Actually, didn't that come out after this, but it just looks ridiculous. Just doesn't work, these villains. And the, the, the guy who plays, <coughs> that I was looking for the DVD case, must have put over there. Actually, it's over here. I was going to look at what was the, the name of the bad guy. Wes Bentley. I read somewhere Wes Bentley, he would only, he at this point in his life, he was just doing roles to get money for his drug problem. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I read. Which made me go like, why? Why was Wes Bentley chosen out of any all the people to play the villain? It's just these villains are very. Half-assed, to to be perfectly honest, they're below ho hum. They're not intimidating. You don't feel that they're a challenge to the Ghost Rider. Wes Bentley, he, you could tell he just don't give a fuck in his role. That's why I buy the whole, he only took money for drugs. I mean, like he took these roles. Like Nick Cage, I, I feel he's a little bit of care. Wes Bentley, not really. Granted, the villains in the sequel is not much better, but I might put the decay, the what was his blackout, whatever his name, a little bit above Wes Bentley, perhaps, but not by much. It's still not that good of a villain, honestly. And that's why I was saying, like with the uh, with Ghost Rider, does he just not have good villains, or they're just not done well, or he just kills? easily the villains and there's no challenge like what the deal is I don't know what the fascination with him watching videos about monkeys I mean I did almost chuckle at that line we touched the carpenters and that monkey video game we're gonna have a scrap on our hands <laughs> but this is I, I imagine like someone who's really done about ghost rider the watch is going what the fuck is this but how is that different again from when a whole hulk giving a fucking tacos and uh some of the or fat thor thinking he's in the big lebowski thinking he's the dude You know what I mean? But people give that the pass. What's the really the difference? That's much sincere question. What's the difference between Nick Cage eating jelly beans and fat ass Thor and that's all play for laughs? But that movie tried to be more serious, but then it has that shit. And that to me was more distracting than this movie. At least to me. I apologize there's some dead spots. It's hard to talk for like two hours consistently, especially when I didn't make the movie, so I can't really tell much about the production of the film. Interesting, like old cartoon. Yeah, old cartoons back then were creepy as fuck. Sometimes racist as fuck, but... The skull one is appropriate, of course, because of the writer himself. Mm 
almost look like Rebecca Romaine Stamos, but it's not. I'm like, is that the girl who was in The Punisher, John, Thomas Jane? No, nah, it's not. That's the thing, though. I I don't give one iota one iota of shits about the villain. He's pale face. Looks like someone from Twilight. Just needs some fucking glitter. And the effect of the the decay. I don't know what you call it. Where I don't know. If that's the strongest effects. That's the thing, when you look back on this time frame of the 2000s, a, a lot of times the CGI is like, I don't know if it really holds up. You have this wet guy. I don't know, maybe you should be a fucking towel. One guy looks like Iggy Pop. Another guy looks like he wants to trial for the crow. This guy, the wind. Looks like he wants to be Lobo. Looks like a little bit like Kevin Dillon. It's not, but... Lobo guy. Pay Fonda's like, I want you. Wrap this can around your fucking neck. End of days, I saw that movie, I love it. Arnold Schwarzenegger is gonna fuck your shit up. I mean, it could be, maybe this is his one form. He's like, fuck it, I, uh, I'm gonna go into another form. And then I'm gonna be the spirit, and then I'm gonna possess Gabriel Byrne. And maybe this movie takes place in 1997. And then Arnold's gonna fuck your day up and ruin your Christmas. Ruin your New Year's, I should say. So, be warned, Arnold Schwarzenegger is coming to kick your ass, devil. I love End of Days, I saw it in the theater. Those foam fingers in the crowd. And anytime we think about it, I think of like the Hulk Hogan foam finger. And I think I had one of those way back in the day when I was a kid. Because as a kid, I was a Hulkamaniac. Not, not much nowadays. Yeah, I think people got annoyed by the eccentric stuff that KB bring into it. Like the jelly beans and loving the carpenters. Drinking hot coffee from the the mug. Not even the mug, but the coffee holder. Again, maybe because I didn't grow with the comic book, I was fine with the eccentric stuff. And at least Cage isn't just leaping off the fucking bounds with his performance like he is in the sequel. So, I was I was fine with it. I was fine with his performance in this. Fuck your problem, people. Get out of the way. Ah, yes, the little girl growing up. How the hell did I forget? Eva Mendez. Eva Mendez. I think she was in Too Fast, Too Furious. But uh, I like Eva Mendez. I thought she did fine as well. I never had a problem with her. I, I didn't. I, I, I like the slickness, the humor. I was, I was fine with in this. It, it, people call it campy, cheesy humor, but to me, it, it added a little bit to the fun. 
And a lot of these movies were doing it. I mean, Spider-Man films were doing this kind of humor. Even Daredevil had a little bit. I mean, a lot of superhero films in this time period was doing it. And nowadays, people are like all these films suck. Well, they they still praise Spider-Man one and two, but the rest, like, all oh, these films suck. Dude, Marvel. I'm sorry, all the Marvel films nowadays are not fucking ten out of tens either. Okay, Ant-Man and the Wasp was so-so, in my opinion. Black Panther, overrated. I'm sorry the guy passed away. I think that's an overrated film. Captain Marvel, horrible. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I don't mind it. I do think it's a step down from the first one. Although Michael Rooker was pretty badass in it. Avengers Endgame and Infinity War, I think they were absolutely overrated. I'd rather watch the first two Avengers films. Well, uh, you, well, you like... Yeah, you know what? I like what I like, and I'm not going to be ashamed of it. If you like those films, cool. I'm not here to say you're wrong. But I'm not going to fucking... Uh, oh, I better not say this. Because it's the unpopular... Pi- Fine, I'm glad to be unpopular. This is my opinion. Well, you're just saying it to be different. You like this film just to be different. Well, if that's the case, then how come I enjoy the first Iron Man? I enjoy the first Thor. I enjoyed the first Guardians of the Galaxy. I enjoyed Doctor Strange quite a bit, actually. Want to be against the Dear Grain? Why do I hate those movies? Why didn't I hate Joker? I really enjoyed Joker. If I want to be against the Grain, I could say Joker's a piece of shit. Which some people do feel that way. I disagree. I really like Joker. But I'm not going to like something that I don't like. And I'm going to like whatever I like. And I like this movie. I didn't. Does it have flaws? Yeah, not all the humor works. Uh, I didn't. The villains are absolutely weak. The fights seem to be a bit anticlimactic. But, uh,. I didn't. I like some of the the humor heart to it as well. I think some of it does work for me. Nick Cage works for me. Eva Mendes I like. Sam Elliott when he appears, always nice to see Sam Elliott. (laughs) He took the cars out, but he added a bunch of fucking helicopters. And this character kind of disappears after a while, his buddy, he disappears after a bit. Sorry if you hear that, it's my stomach, I have to go eat after this. But, uh, it can wait a little bit longer. This is the deal, man. You ride this motorcycle. If it's up your ass, you apologize. If it doesn't, you go out and you get sushi off those naked chicks. Again, I don't mind these type of shots going on the over the helicopters. Get a little bit of the love story in there, which I don't mind the two actors, so maybe that's why I could deal with the love story in this instance. Well, I like both of the actors, that helps. And he barely makes it. I don't know, football field, spark. I mean, there's some production value in here. Which, yes, is nice to see. <laughs> I was going to laugh at that helmet, just smacked the kid in the face, gave him a fucking broken nose. <laughs> and then the kid, like, fell down, broke. You know, oh, shit. Well, maybe it wouldn't be funny, but I mean, uh, 
I was getting hit in the face like, oh shit, didn't see that coming. But this is one of those things that I did enjoy. Like, okay, he's like, fuck it, I'm gonna go after her, and I'm gonna try to flirt with her. Wow. They're both in different vehicles. I thought there was a certain charm to the two actors that make this type of scene work. And Nick Cage's like, hey, I need to talk to you. Okay, I'll find a way to make you stop. <laughs> And trying to get the, the driver to stop. She paid my bills. You don't pay my bills for me? I did some, uh. Obviously, with the Nick Cage shots, those are after the, you know, post production, but some nice wide shots with the stunt men on the, on the motorcycle. Some good shots of that. Yeah, they did correct to the guy riding the motorcycle. Like this nice spin here. Sort of a wheelie on the front end. But even that quick shot is a pretty dangerous where the van has to stop by inches away from Nick Cage. Because you see it's him standing there on the, on the uh, motorcycle. I mean, I don't know if... Sometimes they do that and they do it backwards and they reverse it or because it was only going to go so short they were able to handle it that way. It means I want you to see it on my face. <laughs> Italian. Not Italian. Italian. So anytime you say Italian, don't say Italian. You say Italian. So I'm going to Italy. I'm going to go for an I exam. Well, actually, that's different. Uh, that I mean, that was a bit much. Like, okay, the kiss, and then it cuts to a cow going moo. But it did make me laugh. I gotta be honest. It did make me laugh. So I guess it's it was successful in this intention. <laughs> it did make me laugh. So there, there you go. Blame it on the rain. Blame it on my sense of humor. Blame it on something. Yeah, the people were mad, but not that they know it's Johnny Blaze. They're perfectly fine. Uh, how do they know? Were they coming back from, or they just heard on the radio, these people in the cars? Of course, this guy, why the fuck is he late now? Why didn't he send a message already? She's waiting. <laughs> that was a nice touch. I always forget that she had a crystal ball, like a imagined eight ball. See, so yeah, that does a little bit of something to her character. So she's, she's not just the boring damsel in distress. That little quirk. Let me have a magic eight ball. Just her look says it all. I didn't, buddy. Why didn't you... Uh... That's a nice effect. The hand getting red. But again, it's like, well, why didn't you text her earlier, buddy? You're late. And of course, the worst time, of course, the one day you go and go on a date, this happens. And I guess that's a tough thing with origin stores, is that with an origin store, you do have to take some time in order to get into the, the lead character. And sometimes that could be 30 Sometimes 40 minutes. I think that's why there are times you wonder if you should just skip the origin aspect because of that. But on the flip side, uh, maybe it also depends on the hero. Like if it's Spider-Man, we don't need to see the origin of Spider-Man ever again. We don't. 
But if it's something like Ghost Rider, or if you did a movie on, I try to think of a superhero they haven't made a movie on. Why would I think of any? Come on, there are, there are hundreds and hundreds of superhero comic book films. Why am I not thinking of Savage Dragon? I just do that. Savage Dragon. You probably want to do like a little origin. Like, okay, where did this come from? Maybe not. Maybe it's like, you know what? Let the, have the audience try to get them to trust us. That you'll understand as it goes along. But if you do that wrong, then you pay the price. So it is a risk when you delve into that. So again, so you got that would be up to the writer, the alter, and the director as well. What choice they want? Do you want to go with the origin, or do you want to say let's get into it? Maybe through flashbacks, we tell you a little bit. I mean, again, see, does that fucking thing again? I didn't. Did he do that because he saw the kid at the beginning do it, or did the kid have to copy what Nick Cage was doing? It, it just comes off as hokey. I don't know why. He, I, I don't know. It seems like he's going to, what, put a spell? <laughs> Shazam. I mean, I, whatever. And says, I don't have Mel the Yellow here anymore, which sucks. I'm trying this out, RC. It's okay, Royal Crown Cola. It was cheap. I'll probably try a different one next time I go somewhere. But sucks that they don't have Mel Yellow because of the fucking pandemic. They don't want to ship it here. Like other stuff. Fucking pisses me off. I miss my Mel Yellow. I really, really do. But what can you do? I mean, this, I know, I know, I, I'm not talking about the movie real quick, but it's really not much has happened in this scene right now. I mean, this RC Cola, at least it's a lighter taste. It doesn't have a heavy taste of cola. So it's lighter, so it makes it a bit easier to drink. So at least there's that. I don't know, whenever I think of this stuff like this, I always wonder, like, all the drinks that were in the past that I'm never going to get to try out, like, Tab. I heard of Tab so many times in old movies. I'm like, man, I wonder what Tab really tasted like, Tab. And not like an old drink that you buy off eBay. I mean, like, you know, f fresh. There should be some kind of, you know how they have retro... Re like what they do with Chris, they should be like some kind of store that retraces this stuff and sells it to people. There'd be a big market for that stuff. But then it's like you're not going to do anything with it. Let us do it. We'll sell it. We'll take care of it. But yeah, the Ghost Rider, his first ride. I like the trail of fire behind. That's pretty good practical fire there because it's hard to CGI fire like fire is one of the hard things like water the CGI make it seem natural because fire could be just so no rhyme or reason to fire the brown popper well this guy don't die the brown popper A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. These guys, guys like read just from uh, Almost City Equilibrium. <laughs> That's the Christian Bale film. I love that film. I'm think uh, the one with Kate Beckinsale, Underworld. Yeah, the vampires were like read just from Underworld. Waiting for Kate Beckinsale to to. Uh, him. I did when people die, like they turn purple, and it's like, are they turning to the purple people eater? Is that what they're turning to? They turn to their 
Violet from from uh, Willy Wonka. Violet, you turn Violet. Now here we have Nick Cage turning. I do like this aspect, the the footprints on fire. I mean, it's like it looks like real fire too. So that's a nice idea. See, that's an idea that could be just ignored or no one would ever thought of. And I'm like, okay, that's a nice little seasoning on, on the scene. Edward Nick Cage with the crazy eyes. But you know what? This I will handle it more than what he was doing in the, the sequel. Because even Ghost Rider himself in the sequel, there would be times where the Ghost Rider would be like, like, what, why is the Ghost Rider bobbing his head like this? I just don't get it. And, you know, Ghost Rider himself doesn't really have, is that really a talkative person? You're going down. Nope, the movie's over. He got hanged. Roll credits. <laughs> of course, he's not going to get killed that easily. There's where he gets the chain. Which that's not a bad idea to showcase where he got the chain from. So, I mean, here we're getting a battle, which is... Oh, did he get hit by a truck? After being grabbed in a puddle. And maybe like for the first one, okay, it could be a short. But like each fight scene seemed a bit short. They like punch it in the face. I have to one punch the guy's like, whoa, mercy. And then burns him with the chain. That's what I mean, like, with all bad guys, can he kill them all this easily? So it doesn't really seem like there's much uh, hard work that Ghost Rider have to do to win his battles. I mean, his fight scenes come off as he, he can beat them very easily. So there's not really any suspense in the fights, really any, I don't know what you call it. There's a certain word I'm thinking of, like, the fuck does he do, bought a vampire motorcycle? Which that is a movie, there's a movie called I Bought a Vampire Motorcycle. That's a pretty cool design of the bike. That's pretty neat. So that does mean like certain shots of that slowly showcasing the look of this motorcycle. Again, that, that was cool to see. That waiter's a fucking idiot. Of course she's pretty. What a fucking moron. Now we have it killing, fucked up this random cook. Which is nice to see that he can do, um, take care of regular people. And that's Rebel Wilson, who would go on to do, be in a lot of films after this. But this is one of her first, like, roles. Later we'll see her, where she's describing Ghost Rider to the news crew. And this is the introduction of the penance stare.
And that's a nice little detail that the knife actually melts after he stabbed it. And even this whole thing is different in the sequel. Like the whole penance there, there's really nothing to it in the sequel. Like here, I like the way the director detailed the penance there because you see all the sins this guy did, the people that he attacked in mud and perhaps the people he killed and beaten up and all culminating in this fire and hell, the storm of fire and hellfire. And then this pullout where it's the sunken eyes of the his victim. And then the effects are not the best because it's 2007, but I like the sort of charred up eyes. I, I yeah, I thought the pedestal was more interesting here than what they try to do in the sequel. There's like barely anything. And that's the thing with visual effects, it's hard to make it look real of a guy a skull on fire. This is an instance where I understand why you use CGI, because I don't know how the fuck you make that with practical. I really don't. Especially with all the stuff he has to do. If it's like one or two shots, sure, but I don't know how you, like, to get him to do this where you're on the ground and the face, I mean, how do you make that? I have no clue. Dev definitely showcasing the pain that happens in these transformations. Somehow, remarkably, gravitate towards his father's grave, and then we got Sam Elliott. I didn't always great to see Sam Elliott. Does he just Sam Elliott just has that presence, stature, and that has. One of the best voices ever. I think many people would love to have Sam Elliott's voice. Me included. I, w I would love to have Sam Elliott's voice. Can you imagine me doing movie reviews with Sam Elliott's voice? Uh, it would be amazing. Gives him a shitload of water, so he definitely knows. As we come to find out, because Sam Elliott has been through that before. Which to me, I don't know if the movie tried to make it seem like it's a surprise that he was the old ghost writer. But to me, it seems, right from the get-go, it seemed very uh, obvious. So if they tried to make that a surprise, I don't, don't think they did a good job with it. But I mean, I don't know how you'll make it a surprise. It just seemed... Obvious that yeah, you're doing with supernatural stuff. The guy at the beginning seemed look like the same hat, but he was younger. The bigger surprise was, was that if he wasn't the previous Ghost Rider. It will happen again and again and again until you are dead. No, I'm just. I'm Nick Cage. What the fuck do you mean? Who am I? It makes me wonder if somehow you were able to do a Ghost Rider in the 80s, Sam Elliott would have been an interesting choice. <laughs> you know about the deal? Ah, uh, here we have the 
the uh, news crew. Here we're going to have Rebel Wilson. Uh, Rebel Wilson, again, she was in that piece of shit film Cats from 2019. She's been in other stuff too. Sad to say, this is probably the best role she's been in. I, you know. Sorry about the noise from the thump sound. But th this is, yeah, I would say this is the best role she's been in. I mean, she hasn't appeared yet, but she coming up. Piss off. How about I piss on your head and call it raining? Okay, I guess that's later. Never mind. Yeah, apparently this is the extended. I I, I guess it's the extended cut. If it is, I don't know what was added. Maybe the last time I saw this was the extended cut. But I mean, there are websites out there that there's like a comparison website that compares different cuts of the film. I didn't. Um, if you just type in a movie comparison, it'll show up. I mean, sadly, Sam Elliott is pretty much here just for exposition. But, I mean, if you don't have someone do it, Sam Elliott's a great choice to have. But he doesn't really do anything else. That's one of the, the flaws I have with the film is when he goes out to ride, he doesn't do anything. They ride for a little montage, and he's like, nope, I can't do anything else. <laughs> I mean, what? Like... You're not going to have him help Ghost Rider fight or anything? Did he go off to the afterlife after that? Did he go off to fucking Burger King? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, Blackheart, that's the villain. Idea and in another person's voice, this exposition could be construed as hokey or silly, but you know, Sam Elliott sells it. Do his best to sell it with his demeanor and He did definitely play a fatherly figure. He did with Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse, did it in this. And Sam Elliott there's not a lot of movies where he got to be the main star. There was one called The Final Cut, or it was like he was a, a bomb expert. That was disappointing. I mean, it, it was worth a watch for Sam Elliott, but you wish it was like a bigger movie and more stuff happened. But... Uh, Yeah, I know I have a microphone holder, but I have no way to actually put it successfully. And this is the best way I can do it. It's like this. Do it for my dad. No, shut up. Captain Crunch. We need some forensic shit in here. Call the CSI or call David Caruso. I've seen your naked pictures on the internet. No. Yep, you fucked up the road. Now they don't be there for five years to fix that road. That's usually what it takes. 
if there's a low crop, it'll take them two years. There's Rebel Wilson. And, you know, her little cameo was fine in this. The Eva Mendes uh, reaction sells it. Like, Rebel Wilson doesn't come off as annoying in this. I think that's because, like, her tone of voice is fairly neutral. You totally pulled it off. It's not too over exaggerated in her voice. I mean, that's what helps make it work. Like she has that supposed to be awkward, and she's using awkward poses. Like that was that was fine. Burn. No pun intended. You're just a carny and you're just a phase now. Fuck off, cage. Go back and live in your cage, Nick. Nicky boy, little Nicky. I know what we're doing with hell, little Nicky. He definitely got in shape for this. Got the six pack going on. That's really good shape. I don't know about this whole thing. I mean, I mean, I guess trying to see if you can see the skull. I mean, some of these humor is a bit too much. I have boo 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 boo, you know, in the mirror. That's a bit much. That that could have been cut out. I told you, I saw End of Days. It's with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a good movie. Underrated. The host can, can, can control the spirit through concentration. The fire element that exists within man. You control the fire. Take the fire from the palm of my hand. Actually worked. See, it seems like he can control it here, but in the sequel, it's like, I'm out of control. I can't do anything. And that shows that Eva Mendes' character is a decent character, that, you know, she apologizes for saying the things and, you know, makes her, you know, an actual real human being, not just a stuck-up one-note bitch, which could be easily badly written into a character, male or female, in this type of movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, apologies for the dead air. I'm just not sure what to talk about right now. I mean, Nick Cage as an actor. It's interesting what he's doing now. I mean, the thing is with Nick Cage nowadays is that he... The whole thing where he lost a lot of fucking money and he's in debt. And apparently he's in debt for a shit ton of money. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what really caused him to be so fucking in debt. But that's why he's in so many of these fucking direct video films. At least from time to time he's in some interesting stuff. Mandy, Mandy I think is one of his best films. I really enjoyed Mandy. Color Out of Space. Interesting flick. Uh, it was an interesting movie. I, I have issues with it, but I mean, it was. I like Mom and Dad. A lot of people don't. But I like the concept of Mom and Dad. That was a crazy Nick Cage performance that I did enjoy. Uh, this one he's doing that comes out next year. Does it take off of Five Nights at Freddy's? I think it's probably Willy's Wonderland or something. That looks pretty neat. Like, you know. This one he was in called Pay the Ghost? I actually didn't mind Pay the Ghost. I didn't mind that one. A lot of, I mean, a lot of people trashed it. I'm like, oh, Pay the Ghost. I think this one of those films, I'm like, you know what? This, I don't think this was as bad as I thought it was going to be. I never reviewed it, but I mean... I just watched it randomly like a, maybe two years ago, maybe three years ago, but yeah, I remember not minding it, but you know, there's some worse than others, like Season of the Witch, I didn't care for, uh, I actually liked The Sorcerer's Apprentice, a lot of people did not, but I, I liked it, but I mean, those were in the theaters, uh, like, not... You know, there's one called Stolen, which is like, eh, there's some other stuff, I'm like, eh. There's one called Jiu-Jitsu, which looks awful. I'm sorry, it looked awful. Nick Cage, I guarantee, he doesn't show up till halfway through the film, and he's in it only a couple bits, and just gonna star some guy I don't give a fuck about, and there'll be some... Less than standard special effects. I just, yeah, jujitsu. I don't care to see. But Nick Cage, I, I, yeah, at least once in a while, he gets, for me, something interesting like a Mandy, a Mom and Dad, a Color Out of Space. It's not going to believe you, dude. I'm not going to believe you. See, now, it would have been funny if she's in the car and you're in front of the psychiatric ward. That would have gotten a pretty big laugh out of me. But no, it went to the opposite way, of course. Sorry, I don't mean to be... It's not even humming. It's going... Do, 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 do. How the fuck do they know it was him? Oh, I'm sure they'll explain in a bit. How did they know it was him? Did they find his wallet? Maybe they found his wallet. Oh, the plate. Okay, yeah, the plate. So they think Nick Cage is a brimstone sulfur using murderer. 
I mean, that, maybe that could be interesting for an action horror movie. An evil stuntman using that kind of stuff. You have no proof, buddy. You're just desperate to hand it on someone. Now you got a good cop, bad cop. Yes, I do mind. You don't put that out and it'll make you swallow it. <laughs> you are asking for his help, so you're lying. No, you're lying. Hey, do you have any proof? Do you have any fingerprints? Do you have any witnesses that you saw his face there? Do you have any camera evidence that his face was there? No, you don't. So, either read me my rights or get me the fuck out of here and you can suck my fucking fiery dick. There's going to be a flamethrower to your fucking insides and come out of your ass like the worst fucking fart in existence. You'll have a tail of fire that will make the fucking fire whip in Castlevania 2 jealous. So get the fuck out of my face. Get me the fuck out of here. Or put your head up your ass. And kiss it. Move my ass? You shut the fuck up, Scooter. Fucking dill hole. I mean, looking back on it, there's not a lot of scenes with the Ghost Rider because that's going to be affected on the budget. So then because you have a special effect character, then that's why you don't see a lot of scenes with them because that's where they cost a lot of money. So that's why when you had a Hulk movie or this movie, there's only sporadic few scenes with the title character. And that's one of the problems with having this time kind of thing. That's why it's easier for someone to have like, uh, well, well, I say that, but Iron Man, well, sometimes Iron Man, you have an actual practical suit you could put on and then they use some CGI. So you can at least switch in between that. With Wolverine, boom, you get the claws. There you go. Spider-Man, you could have a suit. I do love that moment. It's like, get the fuck off me. Uh, this is a, I was again found an entertaining little moment. Like, get the fuck off of me! Now this already reminded me a bit of Terminator Two. You know when what's the line he says? Nice coat, nice jacket. The reason that reminds me of Terminator 2 in two instances. One where Arnold's like, I want your boots. You know, like he wants the stuff from the biker. Also, even w it's when uh, the T-1000, he's like, that's a nice bike. So I, it just reminded me a little bit of it. I also thought that was a nice bit where he put he grew the, the studs, the spikes. And this, that's a nice little bit for the character where he looks at the kid as like innocent. So it does showcase that he does judge and can sustain. That's not the word I think of sustain, but can note who's innocent and who's not. Nice little element to add in there. But I was saying with these type of films and the big special effects, 
Uh, that's why it's easier for people to use like uh, a Batman. Because with Batman, you have a suit. You can do whatever you want. Even Superman to an extent. I mean, there's the action flying scenes, but you still have quite a few scenes of him in the suit. But here, you can have the guy all on fire, or his motorcycle all on fire, and that will eat up the budget. But, but even these scenes, I, I enjoy more than the sequel, because they felt bigger. And you get little moments like this, where like he fixes his jaw... Like, don't fucking do that again. Now, leave me the fuck alone. I think there's a scene come up where he drives up the building, which I thought was a pretty crazy sequence. Not something I would expect. But kind of... Cl I would say a bit clever. And we're back to the villains that we don't give a fuck about. We don't care about the villains. Don't give a shit. Don't, don't care, man. I don't give a fuck about your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, or your goldfish. Take your purple people eared ass out of here. Give a shit. You hear these shits given? No, exactly. But now we're about to Ghost Rider and Grant, it's not a lot of like fighting action, it's just pretty much him escaping from the cops, but at least there's a bit of spectacle to it. And I think he does chase one of the, the bad guys in a bit. Like, yeah, they come out. This was always a neat shot where he rises out of the water. Like, how do you do that and still keep it on fire? That That's almost impossible to do with practical, so I can understand doing a siege. And then, and again, this is 2007, so this is about 13 years ago? Yeah, 2007, wow. 13 years ago. A lot of changes. 2007 was very different than it is today. You know, Want to be Lobo? There's the wind. Fucked him up, smash him on the windshield, and the rider's pissed off. He's like, fuck this shit. Now I'm gonna chase your ass. But even with these villains, it's like, there's, there's really nothing you know about these villains. Okay, the has a wind aspect. What else? There's really nothing else you know about this villain other than it's like the wind. So you're more fascinated with the ghost ride, what it can do. Like you ride more circle up the building. Which I thought this was a really cool visual, especially those wide shots. That's really neat. <laughs> and how convenient that it's right where she can see it. Of all the buildings in the city. All the time, she could look out the window. Like, what if she was in the bathroom at the time? She was in the bathroom taking the dumb. She would not have seen that. <laughs> and she'd be s still oblivious. So, call it fate. Call it luck. Call it karma. She just happened to, you know, and it happened to be that same building. Not a building two blocks away further or two miles away further. I could be wrong, but for, for some reason, I remember hearing that this was added later, this helicopter bit. I could be wrong on that. But it's a fun little moment showing his strength and power. 
and then pretty much the steer this guy. <laughs> Alright, I think that's pretty badass. He doesn't hurt or kill the guy, but it's like, you piss me off. I don't know if a helicopter did get that much in control after being swung, but uh, apparently it can based on the movie logic. But again, that's kind of a fun badass role for Ghost Rider. Again, doesn't hurt or kill the guy, but it's like, get the fuck out of here. He can't grab you, man. But that's what I mean. It's like, oh, what's this battle? He misses a couple times because goes through him. What am I going to do next? So now I'm going to do this thing and it kills him. And the guy just sits there in the fucking... And that's what I mean, like, the battles seem almost anticlimactic. I mean, it's an interesting way to kill the villain, to be fair. Is that the exact same thing? You know, one, he burns, this, he turns into this stuff. But, uh, it's like, okay, that's it. It just doesn't feel... I mean, that's a cool shot. It's almost like th there's more attention paid to him going up and down the building than the actual fight. <laughs> like the actual fight was just a, eh, whatever. But going up and down the building, that's the, the clincher of the scene. Which is a weird way when you think of it. It's a weird, uh... <laughs> something I didn't realize until watching this again. It's a cool bit of the scene. But again, not for the fight, but for the... I mean, it was barely a fight. <laughs> yeah, do you believe me now? And thankfully, the cops let her there. They're not holding her back. I don't know why they're letting this girl just right there in front. Why? Like, why are they letting her walk up? It's a bit weird. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. And burn. Again, doesn't want to hurt them, doesn't want to kill them, but just scare them off. And leave me the fuck alone. And again, certain scenes like that where you have to set up on that real cars being thrusted back and real fire as well as incorporate then the CGI Ghostwire stuff into it. That mix of practical with CG it's nice instead of just 100% CG. Because nowadays it would be like maybe CGI cars and CGI. So I appreciate that at least a blend of practical and CG. Now we got Sam Elliott again. Don't fucking feel like it. Nope. Take a fucking guess, buddy. And leave me the fuck alone. What do you want to do? Go to Agent Coulson? I know that with Ghost Rider, now Marvel owns it, and they put Ghost Rider on a TV show, The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I don't get that. Like, why would you waste... Why would you waste that character on a TV show? Again, I don't understand that. Like, you have Ghost Rider, the character, and you waste it on a TV show? And it's not even a TV show about him. It's just, here's an appearance of him on a TV show. I, I don't understand that. I, I don't get that at all. And a TV show of Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., not even like 
oh, he's on the TV show of The Punisher or fucking Daredevil or whatever. Just Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't, again, I don't get that. It's like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we need someone to watch this sh fucking show, put Ghost Rider on it. Now, of course, you know, Sam Ellis pretty much explaining his own character. Which, again, they, they make it seem like a surprise, like, oh, he's Carter Slade. He's the guy. But I'm like, I'm sure a lot of people would know, okay, that's who he is. Because who else is this guy? How else would he know all this? Like, seriously, how else would he know all of this backstory? Because he is the guy. Roxanne! Red light, your titties are all right. I have a menace. Put on a red light. I said your titties are all right. Okay. Beautiful lady, Eva Men Eva Mendez. This is Donald Old. I didn't. He's disappeared for a good chunk of the film. Been a while since we've seen him. And this is probably the last bit we see of him in the movie, I believe. He relapsed, buddy. Oh, if you're wondering, this uh, DVD, which you can barely see, is a two-disc DVD, and it has commentary with producer Deary Foster, commentary with writer director Mark Stephen Johnson, visual effects uh, t supervisor Kevin Mack, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. This two, three making of Spirit of Vengeance, Spirit of Venture, and Spirit of Execution. And then feature as chronicling 40 years of Ghost Rider comic book history. So, not a bad DVD. I'm surprised Nick Cage is not on the commentary, but to be honest, he barely does commentaries. So, I guess it's not that surprising. I don't know what he thinks about these films nowadays. I know at times, I forget what YouTube channel it is. It's a company. They'll deal with the actors. They'll talk about their iconic roles. I don't know if Nick Cage... For some reason, I think he did, because I swear he had talked about Con Air. Maybe not. But uh, I have to look it up, see if he ever talks about this film. I should get Sam Elliott in the ground, man. Fuck this guy. Fuck Wes Bentley. Not the actor, the the character, Blackheart. Or like fuck nut. Okay, stop yelling give it to me because you make you think just <laughs> give you what? 
a hand job, a blow job, some other job, a desk job, a rim job, a jump start. Now, I'm kind of surprised and wonder why he didn't kill Sam Elliott's character. I'm glad he didn't, but I'm just surprised. And do wonder why he didn't do it. He's counting on it. Oh, see, he took the words out of my mouth. And I know it's a bit dark in the room, but uh, you're not missing much. Just my face. It's a bit hot, and I didn't want to to uh, put on the light and make it hotter in the room. Now, of course, they're going to take the then Nick Cage is going to go to Sam Elliott, and they're going to drive over there, well, ride over there. Oh, he did die. Okay. Donald Lowe's character. That was so quick. I think there were times where I could, I like would look down, and I would look back, and I'm like, wow, okay, he's dead. So, okay, he did kill Nicholas Cage's friend. I completely missed that. Wow. I can't do the penance there yet because he doesn't have a soul, but it'll work later. Then just punch him. I can just punch him or something, man. I uh, work for this fucking jag off. Great. Give a fuck about you, man. I ain't working for you. You work this between my legs, bitch. How about you wait for a star to fall, fuck face? So well, I did. I did, I for, co totally forgot his buddy played by Donald. I think it's Donald Lowe. D he killed him. I didn't even completely forgot that. Completely forgot. But again, why did he not kill Sam Elliott's character? I guess they left him alive so that he could tell Nick Cage where to go. I guess that's the reason. I don't mind that line. Some people may groan at it, but I don't mind that. He may have my, sp he may have my soul. But he doesn't have my spirit. And again, people complain about these type of lines and call it bad dialogue. But to me, that's the dialogue that becomes sort of, I don't want to say relatable, but those classical lines that you find was hearing it repeated because it gets you 
to where you need to go fast, straightforward, and give you a bit of feeling and emotion. Like, for example, if someone goes, I was born ready. Yeah, the line's been said many times before, but because the line, to me, works. To me, they're good lines that are fine with being repeated. But a lot of people just feel it's cheesy, corny, whatever you words they want to use. Plus, it's based on the delivery of the line, too. Car Slade has the horse that's on fire. And I like this song, too. I thought it was a nice usage of the song. Ghost Riders in the Sky. Why, okay, you have a cool shot going the horizon, the two ghost riders riding side by side. Riders in the sky. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a cool little scene. But it's like Sam Millett does his ride, and for what? <laughs> he gets there, he's like, I'm done. I used it all up. And I'm like, so what was the point other than to have this cool shot? Does OT. What's Sam Miller going to do to help Ghost Rider? What's he going to do? Is he going to take out the water theme? No, he just rides the other way. And it's like, what the fuck? I need a trail for me. I got nothing left. I had to change one more time. I was saving for this. Okay, let me ask you this. Why didn't you ride on the back of Nick's motorcycle and then change right there and help Nick Cage fight the bad guys? Like you get on the back of the motorcycle, you both ride there, and then here you could change one more time, have him fight the the water creature, or the water whatever the fuck his name, and then him fight Blackheart. But it's just like he did this ride literally for nothing. <laughs> like I'm gonna ride here, then say goodbye, and then ride back. <laughs> that that always irritated the fuck out of me. Like what was the point then, other than to have that one shot with them riding through the desert both on fire I just that, uh, I mean it's even on the back of the DVD that's like the only reason and it's like what a waste it just makes no fucking sense I can only change one more time I didn't get on the back of the fucking motorcycle Nick Cage rides you there and then you change uh, there's two bad guys have Samuel, fight the one. And then I can only change one last time. He rides off. Nick Cage is Eva Mendez. But no. I, I don't fucking get it either. If someone wants to explain to me, sure. Fuck. You could have waited and changed there and then do something. And then what happens to uh, Sam Ellis' character? Does he go into the afterlife? Does he go back to his job digging graves? Does he work at a fucking burger team? I don't know. Did, maybe he went to eat at McDonald's. I don't know. I would. I don't know what the fuck happened to Sam Ellis' character afterward. Does this whole water thing, really nothing comes of this fight. The struggling underwater. And Nick Cage is like, okay... Fuck this. Three, two, one. And then um, heats him up and burns him. 
I didn't. That's really not much of it. Like, how long was that? 30 seconds? Might not even be 30 seconds. It's like... <sighs> that's what I mean with the fights. It just... I guess, sorry for bumping the thing. Does anybody with the fights? It's like... That's it? I just... That's it. That's all there is to it. Nothing else. Well, fuck. <laughs> Shit. Shit, fuck. Here I come, riding down the street. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. People say we're monkey around. Thank God, you know, Sam Elliott gave him that shotgun. Which does, that doesn't return in the sequel. I think the sequel is almost not even a sequel to this movie. Because the whole deal is different. You have a different actor as the devil, different outfit, different haircut, no shotgun. I think the bike looks, you know, you know, different bike. He's not in America anymore. He's in Romania. Where the fuck? Because I guess that was cheaper for them to shoot. Are you doing the death punch? I like the idea of him throwing fireballs at the guy. This is a little bit more battle compared to the others. Which makes sense is the finale of the film. It should be. San Ganza, something about getting all the souls. And all the souls will be into him, and that's going to do something. Hell on earth, end of days, that type of thing. I mean, the the plot and the villains, they're not the, really the strong part of this film, to be honest. Perfectly fucking honest. But I, what I like about the film is, you know, I like the, the slick look of the film. There's certain moments with the Ghost Rider himself. Uh, again, I like Nick Cage, Eva Mendes, Sam Elliott, and uh, some of the humor I'm fine with. But again, again, like I said at the beginning of this, it's not a film I defend, but it's a film eh, I like it. One of those things, eh, I don't mind it. I, I like it. I don't hate it, but I can understand why people would. And to me, this is a lot better than the sequel. Like, the sequel just feels cheaper. The drunken man look of the camera, which works well in the tone of the crank films, but not in Ghost Rider. I'll get to that when I review it. Now, I never read Blackheart in the comics. I have a good feeling this was not done justice. Just a gut feeling. You can let me know, though. One little walk in both worlds. I mean, in a way, the better version of, of these films is Constantine with Keanu Reeves. Like, that's a film I'll defend. I'll defend Constantine with Keanu Reeves. But I mean, you get nice moments like this, using the shotgun. I'm a sucker for shotgun fun. I am. Mm -hmm. 
and using his plan to lead him into the shadow in order to now he's got souls that he can do the pen and stairs so leading him to where he needs And you let Eva Mendes do something, that's nice. So again, she's not just a damsel in distress. She actually gets to do something. A little bit of Sarah Connor. Not as effective as T2, but... It's like, it's fine if it's empty because it's a super shotgun. I think that's a cool moment, like the, the shotgun firing at it that's on fire. Like I said, the director did some cool visual moments of that nature, which enough of them pepper the film that makes me uh, enjoy it, be entertained by it. I think now that he's got souls, guess what Ghost Rider can do? He can do the pen and stare. Idea is not really an epic battle or anything, and I mean it's pretty mundane when you can compare to a variety of other battles at the end of superhero comic book movies. But uh, you know, what can you do? I mean, Wes Bentley is just not the to me the right choice for this. Yeah, Blackheart obviously was pretty stupid with not realizing you told him he doesn't have a soul, but now you do. And yeah, I don't mind this whole montage showcasing all the sins and all the souls. At least it gives a little bit more to the, the pen and stare. Little visual aesthetic to it. The, all the people they killed. Burned his eyes right out. You fucking pansy. Fucking pansy. Yeah. Ghost Rider's looking at her like, let me see them titties. <laughs> let me see them titties. But. You're not afraid to get your hands burned? Because that is fire, lady. There you go. And we are, we're getting to the end of the film. Pretty much is one more, this exchange between him and Peter Fonda and sort of your epilogue and that's it. And that's the thing, like at the sequel, the sequel is so big and did not have the power of the Ghost Rider. Right here, he off, you know, but right, he can tell that this guy's full of shit. He ain't going to honor the deal. So to be fair, that's why he doesn't do it. But, uh, yeah. But he says, I'm going to use it against you. I'm going to use it to stop you. Not the case in the second film. I'm going to own this curse. I'm going to use it against you. Whenever innocent blood is spilled, it'll be my father's blood. And you'll find me there. A spirit of vengeance. Fighting fire with fire. But then the second film is at the case. It talks about how he's running... 
he's tired of this, he's running, he wants to get rid of this, he's running, he he doesn't help people. He literally says that in the sequel, I don't help people. So obviously, Nelly and Taylor, did they even watch this movie? Did they even watch the ending? It just, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. But just fucking stupid. I like that the that dialogue Nick Cage says. Now the movie did fight the box office. I guess it wasn't such a juggernaut box office that they didn't get a sequel right away. Because I think it wasn't until 2012 that you got the second one. So that's, you know, five years. If the movie was at Gargantua when it hit, they would want a sequel two years later. But yeah, that wasn't the case. But it, it did well enough that, okay, well, eventually we'll do a sequel. But can you lower the budget a bit so then the sequel costs less than this? And you don't have Ava Mendez. You don't have Sam Elliott. You don't have Peter Fonda coming back. You say you got Nick Cage. Idris Elba, which I liked. In the sequel, Christopher Lambert wasted. But again, you oh J and R forever. Looks like the tree from what dreams may come. And yeah, I think the music works. The Ghost Rider in the Sky. I mean, the title alone. It's the right song to use. Because that's another thing. I thought the music in here was better than, than the sequel. Directed by Mark Steven Johnson. And written by him. I'm just seeing if there's a Avi Arad. He was producing a lot of Marvel films at the time. Um, that kind of went away a bit now that Marvel has it. Stan Lee apparently is one of his actual producers, but it could have been just, hey, we wrote you a check. David S. Goyer was one of his actual producers. Okay. It's funny, as I'm doing this commentary, it's getting less and less and less light. In the room. But, uh, Nicholas Cage, I thought he did a fine job in the film. Ava Mendes, sexy, and I like her as an actress. Wes Bentley, I'm sorry, man, you sucked. Sam Elliott, you rocked. Wish you were in the film more. Donald Lowe, didn't even realize you died in the movie. Matt Lawn, I don't know who the fuck that is. Peter Fonda did not come back for the sequel. And I don't recognize these other names. Casting. But yeah, like I said before, I repeated multiple times. Oh, Christopher Young did the score? Huh, from Hellraiser. Interesting. Christopher Young... He did the score for The Fly 2, and I said Hellraiser 1 and 2. Co uh, Copycat, I believe, he did the score too, so that's interesting. But yeah, I can't defend the film, but I like it for what it is. The humor, I get some fun out of. Some of it's a bit too much. Nick Cage, at least he's a bit more controlled here compared to the sequel. I like some of the moments with Ghost Rider himself. I thought the, the budget was on the screen. It looked like a theatrical movie. I don't mind some of the cinematography. I don't mind uh, the setup of the film, the backstory. Uh, Evan Mendes, Nick Cage, I liked them together. I thought they worked fine together. The villains are lame. Uh, that's definitely one of the weakest parts. And uh, yeah, it does have its issues, but. I don't mind it. 
it's Academy Award worthy compared to the sequel. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.